Rookie running back out of Eastern Michigan is in the backfield with Roger Vick. Patton number 20. Flick. For Townsell, intercepted by Tom Flynn. Down the sideline, gets a block from Byron Hunt. He goes down the sideline. He stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at the 17. Again, Tom Flick drops back, looks right. They're in his own defense. And they're double covering the outside man. Tom Flynn just cuts in front of him. It's off the races and a good job of blocking here by 57 Byron Hunt. He's pushed out of bounds before he gets to the goal line. And all of that has been wiped out by a Giants penalty on the original play. Tom Flick gets a second chance. McNeil and Patton in the backfield. Harper and Townsell, the wide receivers. Townsell in motion. Flick with time, now being pressured. Hedden's got him and drops him at the 32-yard line. Andy Hedden in at left linebacker. Watch it here. Andy Hedden is mirroring Freeman McNeil on the right side. He's watching Freeman. Freeman goes in the block. Andy comes up. He's there to make the tackle. Good job of watching the receiver not come out of the backfield. In fact, making the tackle himself. John Elliott, number 76, Giants second round draft pick. Jumbo. Got his weight down under 300. Rutledge throwing to McConkey. He's got it. Touchdown. Great catch by Phil McConkey. He's made three in this drive. Great pass by Jeff Rutledge and a superb catch by Phil McConkey. The people's favorite, Phil McConkey, with his fourth reception of the game. Four catches, 92 yards. Touchdown, Giants. And with 3.46 to go, the Giants looking to open a 10-point lead. And all his catches have been real good catches and well-run routes. Brownlee puts it through. We'll see it again, I'm sure, on the replay, but every catch he's made has been full extension. Very difficult play. Here it is again. Jeff Rutledge looking for the receiver the whole way. He's man on man on the outside. He has his man beat. Dives. Great concentration. Rose in the end zone. Touchdown. He's a winner. I'd be very much surprised with all the talent Giants have on, on the receiver core. They would not make this ball club with catches like that. McConkey scores the touchdown. Timeout on the field. 346 to go. Fourth quarter. Giants lead by 10. Do you like even without an injured Lawrence Taylor, the Giants attack Schrader from all angles, leaving no escape routes on the way to six sacks. When Schrader did have time to throw, the results were no better. After three futile periods of quarterback sacks, poor offensive execution and turnovers, the Redskins found themselves chasing a Giants team that proved to be both elusive and confident. There was nothing to suggest that these Giants would be cut down to size as the visitors from New York continued to stand tall in pitching this unexpected shutout. the sky opened up and with the rain came a Redskin offensive down four. Three Schrader touchdown passes later the Redskins had a remarkable come from behind victory on their road to the Super Bowl. Stop. Joe Morris must use his ability to veer to the outside and to cut back to the inside to find gaps in that Redskins defense. Here watch Morris take the pitch out to his right. He reads the flow and the pursuit of the defense to the left and then Using his strong ability to see and change direction, Morris will cut back into the middle against that defensive flow and accelerating quickly into the secondary. Against Washington, Morris and Otis Anderson must not only be effective runners, but the Giants must also use them in the pass game to pressure those Redskin linebackers. 
A soft spot in the Redskin pass defense is in the middle at a depth of about 7 to 15 yards. With a double tight end formation featuring Zeke Moat and Mark Bavaro, the Giants can match the strength of their two outstanding receiving tight ends against Washington's weakness. Bavaro is one of the best at finding the open areas in the middle of the defense. He's a tough match for most linebackers in man-to-man -man coverage. In fact, he presents a mismatch, as you see here, against the Cardinals' E.J. Jr. Watch Bavaro set up Jr. with an outside fake before cutting to the inside, free of any defensive pressure. And 89 specialty is getting more yards after the catch. Tight ends possess Bavaro's understanding of how to get open at the medium depths. But the Giants don't stop with one. Moat presents double trouble for a defense. On this play, the Cleveland Browns will attempt to cover Moat with a linebacker. Like Bavaro, Moat is a difficult matchup one-on-one -on -one for all but a few linebackers. The Giants' use of Moat and Bavaro in different formations may well force the Redskins to utilize their safeties to match up. And this could open up more areas for the Giants' pass game. I'm sure you can. Right. The to nothing deficit against the Redskins on Monday night did little to sweeten his sour disposition. But in the second half, Parcells' team lifted the clouds of despair with some big play heroics. Linebacker Gary Reasons and safety Tom Flynn team for a score on this blocked punt return. After Flynn's third blocked punt touchdown in the last three seasons, the Giants secured their first lead of the night. And once they had it, they never let go. The defending world champs found themselves on the ropes. And then they encountered number 52, Pepper Johnson, who delivered a knockout punch. Looking something like Carl Lewis after a steady diet of Dunkin' Donuts, Jim Burt, number 64, sealed a dramatic 27-20 comeback win. And the Giants served notice that they regained the form that won them a Super Bowl two seasons ago. This Sunday, the Super Bowl the champions, a 13-point lead, then added new meaning to the old adage, what a difference a year makes. Last Monday night, the Giants had hoped to reverse their dismal form in 1987 by coming out smoking against the Super Bowl champion Redskins. New year, guys. New year. This is one for us. New year. Here we go. Despite their renewed enthusiasm, the Giants' nightmare of 1987 carried over into the first half of opening night 1988. Led by veteran Dave Butts and newcomer Wilbur Marshall, Washington made mincemeat out of the giant offense. Home cooking! Home cooking! Meanwhile, quarterback Doug Williams picked up right where he left off in Super Bowl XXII. When we came in here at halftime, we just stressed to each other that we had to hang together, not panic, because they were playing uh, excellent football. They were running the ball pretty good on us, and uh, defensively, they were doing a great job against our offense, so we just hung together and made the plays.
I'm saying, please, no one catch me. I was hoping everyone was on the ground. And luckily, I, I seen the replay, and everyone was laying on the ground. So, uh, and Mark May was chasing me. There's no way Mark May was going to catch me. Hey, It was an important win for us, you know, I think it, it really meant a lot to us and I think our play showed that, that it meant a lot to us and we were going to hang in there till the end to try to win the thing tonight. One game does not make a season, but in their stunning come from behind victory, the Giants served notice that they are not going to be the pushovers they were in 1987, a fact the Washington Redskins became painfully aware of last Monday night.